is soon recording. All right. Um, today, what we're going to learn is the technical tools uh, to prove the convergence. Uh, let me add technical tools uh, for convergence. All right. And uh, um, first, let's review what we had uh, back on Monday. It is, we have iterative methods. Our goal is to solve the matrix A equals B. And we wanna use iterative methods. The iterative method is a fixed point method. So, Our next iterate is computed by an affine transformation. And T is just another matrix. And this is for, um, for K is zero, one, and two, etc. Um. What happens is we want to we want to prove we want to prove this one converges to x star. Um, let me first put a quotation mark here in some sense. Because we have a vector, we don't have a number. For number, it's very straightforward. It's just, um, we take the difference. If the difference goes to zero, then we're happy. But for vectors, it, it's not immediately obvious how do we measure this convergence. So let's put in some, uh, in, 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 in some sense here. Okay. And what we want to do is we introduce some technical tools to make sense of this convergence. This is uh, what we're going to do today. And by the way, um, for um, this X star is the fixed point of uh, of uh, um, this uh, iterative relation. Okay. And if we write like simple, um, if we write simple, like uh, we solve it, for example, we subtract uh, T times X star to the left, we're gonna get, this is nothing but uh, I identity matrix minus X star is C, all right? And we hope, we hope this equation this equation right here is equivalent to this equation. For example, if we can multiply or we can uh, apply certain matrix P on this system, all right? So that this, this system right here can be rewritten as something like that. And the way we do it for Gauss, I'm sorry, the way we do it for Jacobi, this is, by the way, this is one way. Let me put an exa example here. The other way, so let's review Jacobi. The other way is we rewrite this system uh, in this way, and this is our matrix A. Uh, this is a diagonal of A. This is the lower part of A, and minus U is a upper triangular part, strictly of A. And then we can rewrite this as D of X is L plus U of X plus B. And then if D is invertible, uh, 
we have um, our iterative method. First, we convert this to a fixed point of some linear system. So now what happens is we let this matrix to be our T. It's also called iteration matrix. And this is our C vector. All right. This is like the review of, uh, uh, or say the big picture of uh, what we want to show today. And okay, before we move on, let me check uh, like a technical, uh, if everyone is okay. So um, can everyone like uh, see, uh, how about the resolution of my iPad? Is it, is it okay? Like, uh, so how about the handwriting? Everyone okay with handwriting? All right, if no questions, I'll move on. Um, convergence. The first step of convergence is we want to write down a um, some sort of equation for the error. For example, we know that um, x star, which is a fixed point, also the true solution of ax equals b, it's also the fixed point of x equals tx plus c, all right? And if we compute, if we compute some something like this, we want to represent, we want to represent this term using um, the iterate from previous iteration, which is x sub k. To do this, we simply write down uh, first our iteration. All right. Uh, this is nothing but uh, our iteration. This is by the definition of our iteration. Then we make use of uh, x star is our fixed point. Okay. If we do this, we'll see why we're talking about uh, P as some iteration matrix because it controls how the error propagates through the iterations. Because this C term, when we do the subtraction, it will cancel. And uh, we have this is T times All right, uh, let me copy down uh, this line. Now, if we check this equation, all right, if we check this equation, this is the difference between our next iterate um, and the true solution. This is the error of the previous iteration and the true solution. But they, they are vectors. And what we want to do is somehow we want the error measured in some, some way um, is smaller and smaller after we apply um, this T. And this is our hope. Let me write down this hope here. What we hope is this matrix, matrix T, uh, this T is uh, contraction mapping. We haven't learned contraction mapping for vector yet. So we, we will do that in, in a moment, but uh, we hope uh, T is a contraction mapping for vectors. This, this is, uh, this is uh, um, the theory or say the motivation of the technical tool we're gonna introduce. And uh, the question to ask is, uh, questions to ask is, um, how do we define contractions for matrices? The second one is how do we measure error? 
how to uh, define the concept of contraction for uh, matrices. Ah, uh, let me let me rewrite this. And the second question to ask is, uh, how do we measure the error? All right, let's answer the second question first. Um, how do we, um, how do we, let me, let me use a new page. How do we measure um, the error? Okay. Let me move this down a little. Um, how do we measure the error is called, we introduce something called norm. Or say norms, okay? So that it's a generalization of absolute value um, for the real number. For example, if we wanna um, take difference between two numbers, we just subtract them, we take the absolute value, we get the difference. This is a generalization. Please pardon my English spelling. Generalization of absolute value. So difference, because difference between two numbers is measured by absolute value, right? This is, this is also how do we prove convergence uh, for example, for the Newton's method, um, when we want to um, prove convergence, is we uh, we show the absolute value between the iterate and our true solution converges to zero, and we introduce norms for vectors and matrices, so that is the generalization of this. Um, and uh, on the first one, how do we uh, define contraction for matrices is we uh we make use of eigenvalues in case we have uh, uh learned linear algebra we're gonna review uh, eigenvalues in the moment but uh, uh let's uh, answer the second question first so norms um Um, norms are like a definition is quite uh, um, tedious, but uh, let me directly write down the definition. Um, I'll say the most commonly used norm we're gonna we're gonna uh, use in our class. It's the first one is called a L uh, two norm. It's little L two norm. of a vector x and we write it as uh, a double vertical line of x. Um, I mean, if you guys have learned vector calculus, like the third the calculus in the calculus theories, um, I believe you have already seen this notation. For example, if we wanna compute the length of a 3D vector, and uh, we use uh, this notation. And in general, if X is in Rn, um, this is uh, defined by, we take the square root and we sum up all the entries of X. We take square first and then we, uh, we take uh, square root. All right, and and by the way, um, let me let me move this uh, here. Oh, sorry. 
there is no vector sign. So that X is a vector, X is a vector, N dimensional vector with N components. And, uh, um, and then this norm is defined like this, okay. And now I'm gonna furthermore rewrite it using some notation um, called uh, inner product. So for example, if we see this is the summation of, uh, um, of each entry square, okay? And, uh, um, oops. If we take the inner product or say the dot product of the vector with itself, um, if we recall what's in the product, so let's review in the product or dot product between two vectors is nothing but uh, we just sum up their corresponding entries. What happens is, uh, um, for example, uh, notation-wise, um, you can always see people using this notation, this um, parentheses notation. So um, this uh, parentheses x comma uh, x parentheses is uh, like uh, defined as an inner product, or we'll say, uh, some, so sometimes we all we we write in this way, okay. And um, for L two, for L two norm, we normally put a two here. If we don't put any anything there, it by default it's a L two norm, okay. So normally. We can also we can also define um, the uh, L infinity norm. This is L two norm. Let me put a number here. And the second norm we want to define is called L infinity norm. The L infinity norm. Uh, we just put a little infinite sign uh, down as the subscript of this double vertical lines of X. And this is defined by, the definition is straightforward as well. We just define um, the, this is a maximum of the entries uh, among all the entries. So it is, uh, oops, it's not perfect. For example, let's uh, consider a very simple example here. For example, if vector A, vector A, let's say uh, it is, uh, first of all, uh, all, all vectors we're talking about are column vectors. Um, Let's say A is one, two, uh, minus, let's say uh, three, all right. Transpose column vector. Then, um, then the L2 norm of A can be computed by one square plus two square plus three square. And it is, uh, um, it is what? So this is nine plus, which is square root of 14, okay? And, uh, um, and A's inf infinity norm is nothing but uh, um, the maximum in absolute value of these three entries, which is apparently three, all right? I mean, it's this simple, it's norm. We introduce a norm to measure the difference between 
uh, two vectors. And now, let me put this here. The idea is we use norm. We use either L2 norm or say uh, norms to measure the difference. between vectors. And if we can measure the difference between vectors, we can characterize the convergence. The convergence, uh, what we wanna show the convergence, the convergence. Now we can elaborate this concept of convergence is then So this is either like a two or infinite or we can even have other norms, goes to zero as k okay, goes to infinity. Because this is the number, okay? Let me put, this one is the, after we taking a norm, it's a number, it's a real number, and we, we can, like uh, rationalize what does it mean by convergence because for vector we have so many components what what does it mean by convergence what if one component converges uh, but the other like uh, does not okay so and after um we introduce the norm we can safely talk about the convergence because we just measure it on the norm all right um this is a norm for vectors uh, we can also have the norm for matrix. And it's called also called induced norm. The matrix norm is, uh, um, I would say it, it's not uh, that obvious, okay. The matrix norm is defined by the following. For example, the matrix norm is, for example, ACE2 norm is defined by the supremum for X2 norm is one so that uh, AX, the two norm divided by X is two norm. Sorry, th this should not be x equals one. This should be x two norm is not zero. Okay, and this is uh, this is equivalent as the supremum of uh, x two norm is one and uh, a times x two norm. This is how we define uh, norm for matrices, and we'll see uh, in a moment uh, why this matters. Um, so this is a technical tool um, we want to define uh, to characterize the convergence is through the norms. And, uh, um, and the other, the other tool we want to introduce is how do we uh, make use of a, um, the eigenvalues of the matrix to define uh, contraction. If we take a step back, we look at um, this relation. This is like the next, uh, the difference between the next iter iterate and our solution. This is the difference of the previous iterate with our solution. But right now, if we exploit this relation once again, we'll have, this is nothing but uh, um, T square uh, X sub K minus one subtract X star. And we can we can exploit we can exploit uh, this 
iteration like m plus one times. And let me write down. So by star. which is an iterative relation, what we have is x k plus one subtract our fixed point is t to the k plus one's power. This is uh, this equals t times t, not dot product, but uh, t matrix multiplication, uh, like a k plus one copies of t uh, multiply with each other and x zero subtract x star and um, this one this x zero is our initial guess uh, for the vector for the for our solution okay now we take we take uh, uh, we take norms on both sides which is uh, we take norms on both sides uh, let me let me use this k. Okay, so uh, it's a, so it's a, um, the notation is less cluttered. Okay, so this is k, and come on. Come on, come on. Go, go, go. Um, if we take the norms on both sides, we'll see that um, this is nothing but this relation. We, we just take norms on both sides. And uh, um, what happens is if we use the definition, the definition of the norms, we look at the definition of the norms. Uh, where is the definition? It's right here. All right. Um, if we look at this norms, we'll see first, we rewrite, um, where is it? If we use a definition of norms, if we wanna measure somehow this AX um, of, uh, in the two norms, we rewrite it as, we can do that when X is not zero. I mean, everyone agree on this? This is when uh, X two norm is not zero. We, we can do that. And now what happens is this term, okay? This term, this is a typical a trick of analysis is we magnify a certain term by choosing the maximum over a certain set because this is like one X. This is for one X AX divided by uh, AX two norm divided by X two norm. But if we look at the definition of two norm, this is this quotient is taken over or x such that x is not zero or x two norm is not zero. And which tells us this is less than or equal to because we can take supremum of x such that x is not zero. And we keep this x unchanged. We magnify one term, but we keep the other term unchanged. I mean, this is a key step. If everyone okay with this, um, then we're good. So, um, 
So any question on this? This is like taking a leap of faith. And this is uh, a trick we're gonna use for our homework and also other uh, various things. Okay. And now we just use the definition of two norm. This is uh, the matrix A's two norm times X's two norm. All right. And now we apply this trick. Now we apply this trick back here in this equation. And uh, it, tells, it tells us, it tells us, um, it tells us what? It tells us X, the case iteration subtract uh, our solution to norm is less than or equal to T to the kth power to norm times our initial guess. Difference between uh, the two norm. All right, and we hope, keep this in mind. Uh, we hope the product of this goes to zero as um, K goes to infinity. But if we look at this, that this number right here is our initial guess, okay? It's a fixed number, it won't change. Um, so this is like taking um, the, uh, the length of a vector and it's a finite number. This is a finite number. This is a point. And if this guy goes to zero as k goes to infinity, then we're in business. Okay, this is, we hope. This is still we hope because we, we have to prove like uh, such thing can happen for this t, okay. And now let's, uh, uh, let's show that um, such thing can happen for this t by introducing uh, eigenvalues, okay. Um, here is our theorem. The theorem says the following. Uh, its theorem says, um, So um, the theorem says the following. Um, the two norm of A is the maximum of lambda N and where, where lambda I are the eigenvalues of A if A is non-singular. It means we can take A inverse non-singular means. I.e. A inverse exists and is unique, okay. And this is how we characterize uh, the two norm is through eigenvalues. Um, and we have we have a we have a name for this, okay. And uh, um, okay, let me let me move this let me move this uh, here. Uh, and we have actually a special name for this value. It's called a rho of a, and rho of a is called a spectral. Uh, radius. And uh, uh, why it's called a spectral radius is because we normally refer, we normally refer um, the collection of uh, um, eigenvalues as the spectrum 
of uh, A. So uh, that's why we uh, say this is a um, this is a spectral radius. And let, let's uh, let's prove this. The proof of uh, this theorem. Okay. The proof of this theorem is uh, kind of straightforward, but uh, uh, let's review uh, of eigenvalue first. Uh, review of eigenvalue. Uh, if A is non-singular and uh, um, in linear algebra, we learned that we can diagonalize this A so that we get a diagonal matrix which has eigenvalues on the diagonal. And eigenvalues are defined by, let me use V here, this, okay. If we have an M by N uh, matrix and Lambda is a complex number, okay. Uh, we can have, um, we have to introduce complex number, otherwise uh, we cannot directly say that uh, a matrix A has N eigenvalues. Um, so lambda is a complex number, and uh, um, and this is true, okay. And for for v is not a zero vector, okay. Then we say that then we say that lambda is an eigenvalue, and v is an eigenvector. All right. And moreover, moreover, um, what we can do is uh, um, oops. what we can do is, for example, uh, let me introduce, for example, we can diagonalize, diagonalize a if uh, A is not singular. And in that there exist two, there exist um, P matrix such that we can do Schmidt to make it an orthonormal matrix. Okay, uh, this is uh, Grant Schmidt. I think there is a D, but uh, I forgot where to put it. Um, such that um, P of uh, um, transpose A P is the diagonal matrix of lambda one uh, to lambda n, okay? This is called the di diagonalization, the procedure of diagonalization. And if A is not singular, okay. And now let's take a look back at this theorem. How do we prove this, okay? Um, the idea is first we write down we write down the um, the definition. It's a supremum of uh, x two norm is not zero, and we have this quotient. All right, we have this quotient. We have this quotient right here. Um, but instead of taking the quotient, we're gonna do taking the quotient square, then we take square root. Okay. And you guys will see in a moment why this is uh this is kinda good. It is uh we take the um square of each norm, then we take the square norm, uh, square root outside.
but then, but then what happens is we can rewrite the top one as an inner product, okay? And let's recall this is a uh, y two norm square is y in the product with y. Okay. And moreover, if we use this trick, if we use this trick, uh, we can show, uh, by the way, So let me show it here. This dot product or inner product is nothing but AX transpose. Uh, if we have a column vector, that's right, transpose AX, okay? And this is also, we take A transpose A right here, oops. We take A transpose A, then we are doing vector multiplication with those two vectors, okay? Now we're in business, okay? Why, what I'm saying we're in business is we can now use the idea of a diagonalization for we apply, okay, we apply we apply the diagonal um, diagonalization of uh, um, of uh, the matrix on A transpose A. Okay, and what what that happens is. Um, it's the same thing, then it is the same thing as A transpose A is um, the idea of uh, there exists a P transpose times a diagonal matrix, uh, let me call it uh, uh, M and uh, um, P. And this diagonal matrix is nothing but uh, actually the square of the eigenvalues. Okay. And uh, let me put this aside. And then what happens is X transpose, um, a transpose A X now becomes um, X transpose P transpose M P X. All right. And we can further rewrite this as, uh, we can further rewrite this as uh, um, P transpose um, M and P X in a product with X, okay? And what happens here is because P is a unitary matrix, now because P is unitary uh, because P uh, transpose P equals P, P transpose equals identity. We have, we have uh, um, X norm square, which is X times X can be then written as X transpose X. We can insert uh, P transpose P here. And this becomes um, 
p x dot product with p x. And I don't know if you guys see where I'm going, but uh, um, and by the way, uh, we can rewrite this as m p x times p x. So what happens is what happens is uh, this sum, um, not this sum, but this quotient right here becomes, and let me call this double star, and double star uh, becomes um, supremum, square root of the supremum of x2 norm is not zero. And uh, um, m px px divided by px uh, px. All right. And keep this in mind. M is like a, a diagonal matrix. And we can rewrite this by using y because if x2 norm is not zero, um, we can say, um, if x two norm is not zero, then uh, p times x two norm should not be zero. And we let y equals, let another vector y equals px. So what we have here is, this is y two norm is not zero. And this is y in a product with y. And this is, a uh, uh, m y times y and keep this in mind keep this in mind m is the diagonal matrix if m is the diagonal matrix this becomes um, supremum of y and let me use a new page and this becomes supremum of y two norm is not zero because y is a, I'm sorry, m is a diagonal matrix. m equals lambda one square to lambda n square. Uh, and if we expand everything, this makes m y equals, um, lambda one square y one and lambda n square y n and now m y dot with y is nothing but the sum of lambda i square y i square i from one to n and the denominator is just uh, the inner product and now it's obvious that if we take a supremum of this is nothing but the sum of this one. And uh, um, so it is nothing but uh, the square root of uh, the maximum of i is one to n so that uh, lambda i square. And well done. This is a maximum of I, eigenvalue. It equals a maximum of lambda i, i from one to n. So what happens is we want to use this maximum eigenvalue to characterize the convergence. What we want to do is we want to show if the maximum eigenvalue is less than one, uh, our method converges. Okay. So um, that's it for today. And on Wednesday, uh, we'll continue to show um, like the continuation, which is uh, if the maximum eigenvalue is less than one, then our iterative method converges. All right, so that's it for today.